So um, now I want to say one other thing. There is a system of pada, of padas. Do you know the padas that they use? So anybody who has followed my work understands I never use anything that doesn't work for me. I don't care who said it's great. If it doesn't work, I don't use it. So as I was using the, you know, over the years, I would, you know, look at people's Jaimini system. I would look at my own Jaimini system. And there is a system of padas. It's, the thing is, I, I don't want to go into it extensively anyway, because they don't work. So I, I would use these padas, and the padas would, would supposedly give an influence. When I tell, show you how to do the padas, there could be, you could be in Taurus, and it could have a pada, an influence of the 10th house. So then that, that, that Taurus should have a 10th house career. Or you might be in your, you know, uh, Leo or something, and it might be your fifth house, but it might have a pada or an influence of the seventh house so you could get married or something. But I found after a number of years, they didn't work. So finally, I got frustrated enough that I asked someone who specializes a lot in, in that system. I said, I cannot get the potters to work. I've looked at them for five, six years, seven years. They don't work. He told me, he said, well, the potters are the most controversial aspect of Jaimini. And I said, boy, I wish someone had told me that when I started. You know, nobody told me, by the way, the potters might, might not work so good. They don't work at all. Okay. The potters, there might be more than one potter system, but the potter system that I know, um, it goes like this. Uh, I think they call it Karakamsha or something. Uh, no, they call it Aruda Lugna, Aruda Lugna. So the so the padas would be um, let's say uh, so Taurus is ruled by Venus and in my horoscope Venus is in the fourth house. So if I want to know the pada of Taurus, I would count four houses from from Taurus's ruler. The ruler of Taurus is Venus. It's in my fourth house. So I count four houses from Venus and I get to Scorpio and that's the seventh house. So I would put a seven in Taurus, meaning that, oh, Taurus has a pada of the seventh house. So when I come to Taurus Dasha, maybe there's some marriage or relationship because of the pada, but it simply doesn't work. So I don't use it. So, um, I guess that's pretty much what I have to say. I don't know if you have questions or anything. I'm sure you know just as much as me when it comes to the, the Jaimini system, but um, that gives people an idea. They can look at their horoscope. They can find um, which dasha. Now, to find the dasha that they're in, you have to get a computer program, of course. And there are, in the Jaimini system, uh, there are some systems where they use Rahu and Ketu. In the system I was taught, there is no, no Rahu or Ketu. But, you know, you can experiment with your, um, you know, with your horoscopes, check the dashas, see what those years were like. And, like, here's another example. Like, when I said that my, my Pisces dasha was terrible, my Pisces dasha was very, very young. It was a long time. It was 12 years. And the Pisces Dasha, for me, started at the age of seven and went to 19. And when I was thinking about, you know, what those years were like in relation to Pisces, because Pisces could have been spiritual. But in fact, the predominant energy was confusion. There was so much confusion that was Pisces, 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 but the negative aspect, instead of it being a spiritual period, it was just all confusion. And it was trouble with elder siblings. 
because the eleventh house, Pisces is my eleventh house, which is eldest siblings and groups and friends and things like that. But after I got out of that Pisces Dasha, actually things got much better and much more solid and clear and not so confusing. If it's a Virgo Dasha and its problems, it's probably going to be with health and healing. If it's a Taurus Dasha and it has problems, it would probably be with money and possessions. If it's Libra Dasha and its problems, it's probably going to be relationships, which is Libra. If it's a cancer dasha, it'll be the home life. So for Donald Trump, the home life may be troubled, especially with the spouse, because it's the cancer dasha that's the home, and it holds the indicator of the marriage partner. Um, when I was in the Scorpio dasha, it was mainly about astrology. My most powerful, most important, my most important years for astrology were actually. Um, I learned Western astrology in the late 70s, but I went to India in 83 and, and 84, two trips, 83 and 84. Scorpio began in October of 1982. And by the following year, I was in India. And so that was from age 31 to 40. And those were, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have my second marriage, so all my focus was on astrology and teaching and going to conferences and things like that. Um, I remember K. N. Rao mentioned that in Sagittarius Dasha, for some unknown reason, they have accidents or something like that. Um, also, uh, I'm sorry, can you just repeat what you said in Sagittarius? The connection was a bit yeah. unstable. I, I am simply repeating what he said, and I don't, I haven't even had the experience of it, but he had noticed that if people hit the Sagittarius Dasha, they might trip and fall, have an accident. I don't know why, but that's what he said. Another thing that I found very odd was that I thought that the uh, uh, Adasha of the Atmakarika would be good. They are usually difficult. Uh, you mean, suppose the Atmakarika is placed in Pisces, then the Charadasha of Pisces will be difficult? Yes. Okay. That's what, th that's what K. N. Rao taught. That's what I seem to have noticed, that the Atmakarika, if you're in Gemini and it holds the planet in the highest degree, the Atmakarika, it's not, not so good. I don't know why that is. The luckiest would be the fifth, the fifth one. Sometimes I see a, a person have a dasha that is aspected by the fifth house and the ninth house or something like that. And that's wonderful. <coughs> you know, if it's aspected by five and two, two and 11, the money houses, five and two, those are quite good. Okay. Yeah. So it depends what's aspecting. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to ask you here is, suppose uh, you see that there are like, like in case of Donald Trump, we saw that the Gnati Karaka and the Dara Karaka, the sixth and the seventh indicator, Saturn and Venus, they, they were sitting together. Yeah. So, so it's like, how do you determine which, like, is there any way to determine that which one of them will be more prominent or anything like that? I don't know. I don't know more prominent, but there's no question about it that the marriage indicator is harmed. Okay. By being next to the Ganadi Karaka, there's no way for that not to be harmed. Okay. There's no way, like in my Pisces Dasha, which holds the Ganadi Karaka, Gemini is a problem, Virgo is a problem, and Sagittarius is a problem because of those as because of because of that one Ganadi Karaka aspecting, it's not very good. Okay. Um and yeah. one more thing I wanted to ask you is like you said that uh, if it's Capricorn, then it is, it's not necessary oh, yeah. that if, if Capricorn is in the seventh house, it will be relationship. But Capricorn is because it's the natural 10th sign. So no, 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 no. It's, well, yeah. It, it, it's, in other words, you have to know the signs. Yes. If you're doing this system, the sign is number one. 
Okay, the no, natural no, no. traits of the sign. Huh? The natural traits of the sign. Yes. So Aries yeah. is the natural first house. It's the natural me. Taurus is the natural money. Mm. Money, possessions. Gemini is the natural thinking, teaching. Cancer is the natural home and family. Leo is the natural power, leadership, kingship, investments. Virgo is the natural house of work, sign of work and health and healing. Libra is the natural sign of relationships. If you know the sun signs and what they do, you know, you take those signs. The sign comes first, then the house, and then, but it's aspected, but, you know, it's going to be influenced by, you know, it might be a wonderful sign, you know, uh, 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 Aquarius might be a very nice sign, but if it rules the eighth house, then the Aquarius Dasha is going to have some eighth house problems. It could be good for astrology and metaphysical or inheritance, but it also will catch some damage there. Yeah, and one more thing I wanted to ask is like, um, sometimes I see that suppose, as you said in your case for Virgo or Pisces, so sometimes it happens that uh, like, suppose Pisces is somebody's 12th house, okay? And then there is some, wow. point, suppose. So that's a double, that's a double influence. Yeah, what I was uh, wanting to know is, uh, suppose in that case, if Pisces is the 12th house, for example, and there are no planets in three, six, and nine. So then oh, that, nothing aspecting Pisces. Yeah. So then what I want to ask you is, uh, do you think that still the third house and sixth house flavors will come uh, just because it is the house? A hundred percent. Okay. Of course. Of course. Why not? Okay. So even if there are no planets, the still the flavor will come. That's what you are saying. Of course. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. So if the fifth house is aspecting, it's good. If the ninth house is aspecting, ah, it's good. Okay. It's good. You know, now if the fifth house or ninth house sign holds a Ganadi car, that's not good. Okay. That's okay. not good. But you know, this is this is very simplistic. I'm sure that you know there's you know there's yogas and Raja Yogas. I just I've never learned that much, but it's it's good to know. Just the basics of how this works, I think, is valuable. Yeah, and uh, one last question I have to ask you regarding this is like, people generally say that if like, if the sign which is getting active, if they have like two or more malefics like Saturn, Sun, Saturn, Rahu, these kind of things, like there are severe issues during that time. So have you seen, because I think you also have Sun. I, think you, I think you have to look at the Karakas. Okay. You, if it's the Karaka, if it, Mars is my fifth Karaka. Oh. It's good. It's good. You know? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's, it's more, I think it's more a matter of the Karaka, but it's possible, um, you know, it's possible that it could create some big difficulties. Uh, my Taurus Dasha that I was born in um, for three years was horrible because my mother was ill. So my first three years were very, very bad. Taurus wouldn't necessarily show anything bad, but Taurus is ruled by Venus. And Venus is two degrees from Ketu and two degrees from Mars. That caused the Taurus Dasha to be difficult. Okay, okay. Yeah. Amazing it is. <laughs> It's totally a new system. I mean, uh, I've seen these people saying so much that, oh, my third house, sixth house has no planet. So this Charadasha, which is in the 12th house opposites of sign like Pisces or Sag, that will have no effects of the third, sixth and the ninth houses. These people are crazy. <laughs> okay. So now uh, we will start with the outer planets. I think we'll just Can pause. we take a little break? Yes, yes, yes. I need, I need to get, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Pause it. Okay, so now uh, we will discuss on the outer planets. Yes. Yeah. Um, 